Dr. Vincent, thank you so much for giving us a few moments during what I know is an incredibly busy time for families and superintendents all across Texas. Um, Thanks for I having me, Teresa. Absolutely. I recently saw a quote from you where you said you were glad that the Texas legislature is taking school security seriously, but serious also means fully funding it. How much more money would you have liked to have had from the state in order to meet the requirements of HB3? Well, when you look at it, the minimum is at least $250,000 more to fully fund the 14 officers that we've had to put at the campuses. And those are annual costs that will be in perpetuity. Glad to have them. And they're super going to be we welcome. Um, actually, our agreement with, with our, our security firm has been just great, but we need that money. And it really doesn't stop there. I mean, you know, we have security film and they've helped and we've gotten those kind of things done. But there's just so many other pieces and parts upgrading safety and security cameras, all those elements that you wouldn't think about, but are a big part of what we do. I mean, and. You know, those are the things that they really want to focus in on that, which it's a great step forward, but bringing it to the rest of the way home would be great. You just mentioned LMP, the security firm that you are contracting with. Uh, how comfortable are you that these are going to be contractors? And if you had been fully funded, would you have preferred to have hired officers as full-time employees? It depends on the case where we're talking about the campuses. So at the high schools, at the junior highs, it's a lot more dynamic. There's a lot more different things that happen and those kind of things. When we talk to our law enforcement folks, they're having a hard time filling their regular positions. And so when we're going to be doing that, it's a great partnership to ebb and flow. It's like, what can you do? Obviously, we love our partnership with Wiley and with Saxe. Even with the Sheriff's Department in Collin County, great relationship. Have a cell, have, you know, the uh, Sheriff Skinner cell phone them. But, you know, they simply, it's hard for them to fill 14 more jobs. I can't imagine what the rest the rest of the school districts are doing. So. We expect a special session at some point this fall. The governor has said it's going to happen, and it would probably tackle teacher pay raises, which were not funded during the regular session, as well as school vouchers. Is it difficult to begin a school year with uncertainty around a budget and also around the future of vouchers? I was driving to school at 545 this morning and the song came on, it's tricky. And I'm telling you, it's tricky making all of this stuff work this year. We've had to, we had, it wasn't just teachers. We had to put $1.3 million in to school bus drivers because the economy and inflation and all those kind of things, finding people to do their jobs was one thing. And then we had special education mandate, $3.1 million in addition to our regular budget for meeting special ed compliance stuff. We gave a 3% raise and our teachers deserved every bit of it. And we're having to say no a lot more than we used to as far as it goes. And we're we're one of the lucky ones. I mean, a lot of school districts in our, in our region are, are adopting deficit budgets. And, you know, I, I've always proud of myself and have a great relationship with our, our, our legislators and, uh, you know, working with them and doing those kind of things. It's just, it's just that if then we need more money for those particular things, because it's just, it's been a, it's caused a lot more just to be regular old business uh, uh, in, in the education these days. How often are you in touch with the lawmakers? How much are you saying to them, we need more funding? And do you feel like you're being heard? Well, you know, Justin Holland has been a real champion uh, for us as far as all of those kind of things go and, and has talked a lot to us. You know, our, our communications with our other folks, have, it's there. I mean, I seriously have, a you know, a great relationship with the folks, but it's just we're, we're, we're sort of at this, this, this impasse. You know, it's if it's if then type stuff. And, you know, when we look at it, we're having to do all of these. The legislator has so many different mandates. I mean, so during my meeting this morning, we we're talking about we're going to have to recognize fruit and vegetable week. I mean, every time that we have another law passed and different things that are going to be done, it's more things for public education to take care of. And in addition to law enforcement and safety and security. So when the voucher thing comes up and they're going to get five or six thousand dollars just to do whatever and go wherever with none of those requirements you know we're gonna to have to work that out 
and we're gonna have to work through this this process of saying how does that all work you know it's 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 gonna be a challenge and um I, I'm looking for those answers uh, you know and it's been the most challenging of legislative sessions that I've ever ever well, and what you do every day is a challenge. So best of luck as you begin a new school year. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for giving us some of your time. Well, I love our babies and our parents and our stakeholders. I'm so grateful for the tax dollars that we get. And, you know, I want our kids to feel safe and feel loved and want them to learn. And um, I want for those teachers to, when they go home to feel valued. And if we can do all that, surely we can work together legislatively to make that happen. Dr. Benson, thanks for your time. Thanks.